I'm Nikki McCallum here at the 2024 Vermont Film Festival. This afternoon, we're at Mountain Meadows. As you can see, it's beautiful. There are filmmakers here from all over the world. Let's go take a look around. Festival. Uh, my name is Mark Dzinski. I'm one of the co-directors here. Uh, we are at beautiful Mountain Meadows right now where we've been doing a lovely networking event uh, and we have a wonderful group of filmmakers and fans here um, to support the festival. Uh, also, next to me, uh, we've got Brian Carroll and Chad Irvin from the Vermont Production Collective, uh, a couple of Vermont filmmakers. Uh, one of the focuses of our festival um, is bringing Vermont filmmakers together and featuring Vermont films. Uh, and these guys are uniquely involved in that experience. So um, just want to kick it off by asking you guys to tell us a little bit about the Vermont Production Collective, um, what you guys do, and, and what the focus is. You want to start? Oh, I guess, you I guess. Start. Because I'm the one who had the crazy idea to begin with. <laughs> so, so a few years ago, we were working on, uh, I moved here in 2018, and we have, were having trouble finding um, slowly, slowly meeting other people to work with, other crew members and stuff. And so, um, you know, looking to resources from the state, there wasn't anything that existed. And we wanted to meet more people who actually knew what we were talking about in casual conversations. When we rambled on for 20 minutes about cameras and lenses and didn't look at us like we were crazy. Um, so we started working to try and just get opportunities for people to be able to meet. It's, this, is, this is amazing that there's so, much, so many more things going on now like this. Um, so we, we have been working to get networking tools online to try and decrease the amount of struggle that goes into trying to find crew, trying to, if your sound, location sound person is sick, find someone else who can do it. Um, and just also advocate on behalf of, of us who are out here working and trying to do this for either for fun or for, for work for with the people like with the Arts Council and with legislators and stuff like that to get more support going. And, um, and, and, and uh, uh, one of the big problems is there's a lot of us around, but we were operating like the joke at any of these things is that there are a lot of filmmakers around, but we're all each in little like cabins out in the woods so you got to find each other one at a time so so we have a facebook group and we uh, uh have an instagram where we share anything that's going on in vermont it makes it a lot easier for us if you tag us just fyi i have to contract bound to mention that um as a social media manager <laughs> um but uh yeah and so i guess that's the the short answer i'm prone to rambling sorry <laughs> Is there, Brian, you yeah. want to add anything that is more coherent? <laughs> yeah. I, th I think from my own perspective, um, I joined a year and a half-ish ago. Um, and as Chad so lovingly refers to me, I'm the pragmatic one or the Excel guy who deals with budgets and planning and things like that. That's kind of where I come from, from a professional perspective. Uh, but I worked on a large studio project here in Vermont last summer. And you know, say there's 100 people on crew. Two of them were from Vermont, and that for me is a huge issue. That you know, workforce development and things like that, and just the you know, as Chad mentioned, knowing where people are and what people do. Um, if more film uh, films like that come into town or into uh, the state, ideally more Vermonters will be hired onto those uh, those projects. Mm. Yeah, like myself and uh, all the co-founders of the Vermont Film Festival, we've all filmed in Vermont. 
um, between shorts and feature films. And working here, just from my own experience, I'll say there is such an amazing pool of talent here. Um, and sometimes when you are a filmmaker, let's say coming in from another state, you just don't know that, and there is that tendency to, to bring up your own mm -hmm. uh, crew. Um, something that I also experience uh, making a film here is that there is no film commission in Vermont, right? Um, and right. I feel like you guys are kind of, in a way, stepping in and, and taking the place of that. Um, it, has there been any work or any push for a film commission? And you know, how are you guys? Uh, how are you guys filling that void? Well, this is a politically fraught question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for gotcha. Questions. <laughs> I mean, in some ways, it's a uh, it, and. Um, Relative to my documentary that's screening tomorrow night, not to plug it, but um, the uh, it's about a bunch of Vermonters come together and just sort of solve a big problem that wasn't getting solved from the powers above. We're do, we've sort of done that. We've attempted to do that same thing. Um, there have been a couple different film commissions, and there are lots of different pet um, issues and vested interests uh, with different people in the state and it has been very much an interest of mine to try and walk this tightrope um, where not shutting anyone down um, but also like uh, a lot of times with the commissions uh, it's very focused on luring work in and it's very interested in getting money to the state and getting money, that tax revenue, all that, all, all the, all of that business. And for me, what I, when we had that, it was here in Vermont, and it went away. And when it went away, all of the social connectivity that existed because of that disappeared. And so, what I, all of my interest is, is whatever we we work toward. I I want to see benefits coming to people who live and work here, not just, hey, you're going to get hired for a month on a show that's visiting, but let's help grow each other's businesses. Let's make better films together. Let's grow together. And, you know, and, and, and then the luring production here, um, in that sense, we, we have gotten pulled into conversations. We worked with the Vermont Arts Council in trying to get some legislation passed last year in earnest and uh, a little bit the year before it's an incremental process we're there in the state house where um the more and more people that join our like facebook and our 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 you know give feedback to surveys that we do the more um, um uh, cr uh, cr uh cr what, what am I? The credence, the word that we bring to them, uh, uh, it helps. We're like, we're not just speaking at one person at a time, two person, you know, a bunch of internet comments or people showing up to a Zoom commission meeting. It's we're, we're able to come to them and say, we talked with 450 people who work here in the state full time, and these are their priorities ranked. Um, and, and that helps us. Um, so, so we're, we're, Essentially, yes, trying to step into what a film commission would do. And I think I'm always open if something like a film commission were to come out of it, we want to get something like that going, you, whatever, whatever. As long as there's films being made, I, it's great. It's great for me, right? Yeah. I mean... Um, yeah, I guess just to the to add on to Chad's um, spiel, it's, there, there are people in the Statehouse who are very... Um, supportive of, of what we're doing, of, of creative uh, networking and creative films being made here. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was a little thing uh, involving rivers and water last year where a lot of that funding um, that would have potentially been spread out more rightfully so went to flood relief and, and housing and all these crises. Um, I think we're making incremental steps, and that's kind of the way that we have to go about it. But having you know folks like you all here helping to tell your stories and how um, you know, bolstering things within the state in the creative space will help you live here, stay here, not move back to New York, not move to LA, um, make Vermont stories here in Vermont. Um, speaking of Vermont stories, both of you guys have documentaries in the festival, both beautiful documentaries. Um, Brian, you have your film, Endlessly an Observer. Um, just tell us a little bit about the film, uh, what that process, process was like filmmaking here and uh, making that beautiful documentary. Yeah, so um, 
it started out as a request from a mutual friend. Um, it's about a photographer named Suzanne Upton. Um, and it was just going to be a recorded conversation between two friends, basically. And I said, well, I, you know, why don't we throw up a couple of cameras as well, and we'll see kind of what shakes out. And after the first you know, five minutes of talking to her, it was like, okay, I think we have something more here. Um, and it kind of morphed into this, what does it mean to be a creative? Why do we you know, potentially hide behind the camera and, and what are we trying to shield ourselves from vulnerability and um, finding ways in which that we make connection with other people. And you know, I think it's just a testament to Suzanne's work, um, how many people she's touched and stuff like that with, with her photographs and just how kind of evocative they are. Um, and oddly enough, last night was the premiere of the, uh, of the film. Um, Suzanne was battling cancer for 30 years and she actually passed away last evening. Um, which I think it, it it's such a a kind of a beautifully but sad close to the story that her story will continue on, um, hopefully through festivals and people getting to hear about her work and why she um, chose to to be a visual artist. Yeah, and, you know, we're just honored to have been able to to screen the film, uh, you know, especially around those events. Um, it's wonderful that 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 you know the film will continue to live on and people will learn more about her work and her beautiful uh touching portrait photography that she was trying to convey um with her photography um chad tell us a little bit about connected um your documentary that's going to be screening on sunday well there's a little bit of a common theme in, in the films, the documentaries that I work on, and also sort of overlaps with the Vermont Production Collective stuff. Uh, Connected is about, um, uh, there's, I don't know, if you live in Vermont or if you visited here, you're aware of the sketchy quality of our internet. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, so uh, a bunch of people in the Upper Valley were uh, no, the, continuing to not get covered by uh, the for-profit for internet providers. And so they, at town hall meetings, on meeting day, voted to start trying to solve the problem themselves. And they banded together uh, one town at a time and slowly um, uh, raised the funding and, and have, have worked to um, get internet, not just for themselves, not just for people who live in urban centers, but to everyone. Um, out on dirt roads in Vermont where you have at least a decent internet. Um, I forget what their minimum amount is, like 150 up and down or something. 50 up and down, whatever it is, is way better than what pe a lot of people are getting now. I'm a little bit spoiled. I'm in Montpelier. I chose to live in Montpelier because when I was moving up, I tested everywhere we looked for the internet speed, any place we looked. Um, it was mandatory. I'm a, a documentary editor, so um, I'm constantly sending footage back and forth. Um, what we would like to see is for people not to have to make that choice, and if you want to live out in a rural area, to be able to choose where you live and not have it based on the Internet speed. But outside of that, and, um, I was saying it ties together with other things I do. It's, it's, I, I really like telling stories that you know we're bombarded by information that reinforces that uh, helplessness um, that there are so many problems that we can't do anything to change and so i like to work on documentaries that that say people can make a difference you don't have to be a superhero um, you just have to work at it with your neighbors and try and do something it's like um, we started a Vermont Production Collective. I walked in, I was telling my wife, uh, you know, we can't meet anyone. You got to meet person, people one person at a time. And she's like, well, if it doesn't exist, why don't you make it? And I was like, ah, I was hoping someone else would before I had to. <laughs> I was like, all right, fair enough. And, and so, so yes, yeah, so, so we can make a change. We can make a difference. And, and, I like telling that sort of story, and, and hopefully I got a little bit of that in um, Connected. Um, so hopefully you catch it tomorrow. I'm very interested to watch the slam. I'm hearing good things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've, for anybody that doesn't know, we've also been running uh, a 48-hour film slam, so we will be uh, screening three films that have been produced over very the last cool. few days. Um, 
yeah, connected uh, such a great story about the community coming together, and to your point, really parallels the Vermont Production Collective as a group of people just coming together to solve a problem that nobody else was solving. So you guys just did it. Um, last question for both of you. Um, how did you get into filmmaking, and what's the best part about filming in Vermont? <laughs> I'll be very brief. I, I'm a musician as well, so I, I bought a camera, started filming sessions with my friends. When I moved up here, we started filming in like strange places like horse carriage hay lofts and things like that. And then my wife and I made a few um, horror shorts, and then I started realizing that there's so many interesting people in, um, in the hills around me in rural Vermont. And so I started the documentary process of trying to help them tell their stories and share their stories more broadly than just you know, the 10 mile radius of the town that they live in. Um, I think what I'm finding is just, I've always been big on community and there is such a, a robust and flourishing community here. And as Chad said earlier, it's just a matter of finding a way to, another uh, plug, connect to them. You know? <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, I, just, I, I, look, I look forward to, uh, to seeing how we can all grow together really. I think that that's really important. I think what you guys are all doing here at the, at the festival is such a huge testament to that. So thank you guys. Oh man, what was the first was how we got into filmmaking? Yep. I don't even, it's hard for me to even remember a time. I left college in Tennessee where I grew up and I moved, went to LA and you know, uh, delivered, uh, was an office PA. Um, it's all I've ever really known and all I've ever done. Um, you know, I went from LA to Miami and uh, got an education in just sort of working on every element of the set. Working in the, on, on set in, in Miami is a good way to learn that you should really be doing post-production because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got into post-production and uh, moved to Boston and uh, I ended up, uh, for good fortune or whatever, I think you said earlier, someone said, you seem too young to have edited 35 films. I got connected with um, uh, people in PBS in Boston and, and uh, my background in like writing and, and, and production and stuff, they, it was very good as a documentary editor to know how to tell a story. Um, so I worked for Frontline and, and a bunch of other uh, current affairs stuff. And I moved to Vermont and uh, I wanted to do things that um, uh, had less wars in them. And uh, <laughs> like it takes a toll on you after a while watching that all day long. Um, and uh, the great thing about uh, working in Vermont is um, I'm able to uh, work specifically because of my good internet in Montpelier, and hopefully they will be like this other places, but, you know, people send me hard drives from wherever. I have people I work with in uh, L.A. and uh, D.C. and Boston and New York, uh, and I work on their films, and they go out, they go to festivals. There's one that's just uh, called Join or Die that's a theatrically released, premiered in New York last week, um, and doing a national theatrical, um, and then in my time off of that, I can hop out and I can do like a low budget. I can go around and I can film something. And like Brian said, the great thing about Vermont is freaking people love for you to film. Everyone's just happy to help. Mm -hmm. You show up somewhere, you're like, hey, we'd like to film something here. They're like, great, yeah, here, I'm, we made you some food too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's really, it's amazing. And it's like people who come here and visit, now we've become this de facto film commission where, you know, if you send someone at the legislature, they, we want to come film in Vermont, they say, oh, you got to go talk to Chad. He knows where to, you know, who to talk to. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I can try and connect you. Um, but like, they're not the, the hurdles that you have to go through in a lot of places with like getting the um, all of the permits and that sort of stuff. It's just uh, but the personal relationships. It's all about the personal relationships, which I, which is which is awesome, and it's what drew me, hooked me to Vermont, got me to move here, and and and, uh, and continues to be like the greatest thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, and and just like I love the. Th that you guys are doing this, that other film festivals in the state are making local filmmakers such a, um, a, a focus and getting this opportunity just to meet and talk with people and hear what people are working on because it's so different mm -hmm. and you're able to gain so much, uh, like so many insights 
uh, someone who's found a solution to something that you would never have thought of just on your own in your house in the woods, um, you know. But so yes, it's great to meet you all, and and um, I'll stop talking. <laughs> I'm here with Brian Carroll, who is the creator of the film Endlessly an Observer, which I loved, by the way. Brian, how has the fest been so far? It's been just incredible. It's such a like a gathering of like minds, and you know we're here at this beautiful place with the lake and the mountains in the background, connecting with other filmmakers. The screenings have been great. The food in the Spritz Garden has been uh, fantastic too. Incredible. And um, just it's so nice to connect with other people in the creative space and be able to see each other's films and comment on each other's uh, work. Awesome. awesome, and what are you most looking forward to for tonight? Uh, tonight, I think just like the shorts block, seeing a bunch of things back to back to back um, will be really fun and exciting and kind of get a bite-sized bit of what uh, all these great directors and filmmakers are working on. Awesome, a bite-sized bit of that and of the food vendors that will be yes. <laughs> behind the theater. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brian, well, I'll see you at the Spritz Bar. Sounds good. What a super fun day this has been. I have been kayaking with filmmakers. I have been stand up paddleboarding with filmmakers. I have been devouring cheese plates with filmmakers. We had such an awesome panel discussion and Q&A with the Vermont Production Collective. What a day it has been. And you're not gonna believe this. Now, I'm off to the Spritz Garden in Woodstock. here at the Spritz Garden where we've got some exciting food vendors. We've got Sustainable Eats, we've got Sherry Punjab, we've got uh, the Quichi Yacht Club serving these Aperol spritzes, and we're just eating and drinking before a night of film at the Bentangle Theater. Let's go check out the Spritz Bar. I love this.